What's up, guys? Today on Sad Attack, I'm going to be going over urban sniping. But before I get into that, I'd like to let you guys know about. I can't believe I forgot this. I'm going to be letting you guys know about our Telegram channel that we just launched. Um, if you'd like to check it out, I'll put a description down in the link below. And uh, you guys can get to know us there maybe a little better or uh, just kind of see the dumb shit I post. Also, it's just also just maybe deals I find and uh, things you can look at. So, on to the topic, urban sniping, right? First off, we're going to be going off into the uh, purpose of uh, sniping as a gorilla or a minute man. So, your main purpose is to put fear in your enemy and moralize them, uh, lower their morale so that they don't want to fight. And that can go in many ways as in taking out their support, uh, so maybe the guys that are running water for them, so they're getting dehydrated. Uh, or uh, maybe you're taking out their medics so they can't patch their guys up. Just people that uh, would usually think of them as uh, good causes or uh, putting in, boosting the morale of people. So uh, taking out the people that everybody finds good. Or just uh, like in the book Fry the Brain, and where Fry the Brain comes from is just shooting anybody and everybody that crosses your sights uh, to strike fear in your enemy. That's women, children, stuff like that. Um, kind of the main reason why snipers aren't always looked so uh, proudly upon in warfare and reasons why uh, snipers, when they get captured, are usually tortured for fun um, over information. What platform as a guerrilla sniper should be using? Well, that really dictates what your mission is. It could be a pistol with maybe like a red dot or something on it. Um, or it's something nice like this, you know. Uh, like, or the, like caliber. It could be a twenty two, because uh, if you suppress a twenty two, they're extremely quiet. Or it could be uh, like a 50 BMG or something bigger, uh, depending on, like I said, the range, target, uh, where you're at, the mission, uh, how concealable it is. Things you have to uh, take an account of. Now, also, same thing with optic choices. That all dictates on your weapon platform, your mission, and everything like that. Um, you know, you could just be using a red dot DC sniper. Um, those guys uh, just fire from the back of vehicle using a, a Bushmaster AR-15 with a red dot. And uh, I think they had a 16-inch barrel on there, but with just a flash hider. And what they did to mitigate that flash was fired from an inside a concealed position in the back of their their sedan vehicle that they had, they put a hole in the trunk, and that sedan also muffled that gunshot and uh, hit the flash from their vehicle or from their gun. All right, now concealing your weapon. So there is a number of ways you can go about concealing your weapon. Uh, you could, depending on your area, you could just spray paint it, as you see on my rifle. You could just spray paint it, as you see on my rifle. You could add a sniper shroud as I am working on this new one for you here. Um, and then, or you could break it down, put it in a backpack or another kind of bag. Um, but you don't want stuff that raises suspicion. So if you're wearing a suit and you're carrying around this in a duffel bag, probably a bad idea. So uh, maybe find something that could break down into a suitcase if you wear a suit or something like that. Or... Uh, if you look like you're a musician, you could probably break this down, put it in a guitar case, and you can carry that around. Um, depending on where you're at, make sure your your disguise and your uh, your camouflage for your weapon all match your, I guess your story about yourself or whatever or your look. So, like uh, for example, for uh, disguising your stuff is uh, the Texas Shooter guy that did the Watchtower stuff. The Terror in Texas Shooter. Um, that man, dressed as a janitor, put his guns in a locker and then carried that locker up to the top of the tower, barricaded the door, and proceeded with his, uh, his acts of terror. All right, um, And no one was the wiser because he dressed as his as the role, you know, and no one suspected him of having weapons in that locker. So, uh, having your weapons uh, masked in whatever disguise you have to transport them 
will not raise uh, the suspicions of bystanders or authorities. So keep that in mind. Um, and concealing your position. So uh, there's a lot you can do to conceal your position. Um, one thing you can do is firing from inside a concealed area. So like a room, uh, for example, and you're firing out a window. Now you don't want to be sticking your firearm outside the window because now you're exposing your muzzle flash. Uh, you're letting the sound out in one area. It makes it easier to locate. And um, that if someone's below you or above you or looking wherever, they can see that you're having a weapon in your hands and you're shooting out of a window. So you want to fire from inside your concealed position via room vehicle, as we discussed with the DC shooters. Um, so um, there's things you can do. You could tint your windows. Um, you could, when you're building your, your urban sniper hide, you could dress in the same color as your background if you have gray painted walls. Wear gray pants, uh, gray shirt, maybe have your rifle painted gray, or you could just take a blanket, cut a hole for your suppress or for your barrel, your optic, and drape that over you and your weapon, and then fire uh, on your platform uh, through uh, like a window, a crack, a hole, and um, what you could also do is place a screen in front, also, so it also hides you from people looking on and will not. Uh, affect your uh, ballistics of your round that you're shooting out of your rifle uh, onto your target, so it makes counter snipers hard to locate, harder to locate you. Also, um, firing from an enclosed position will also help uh, reduce uh, people of chances of seeing your muzzle flash or maybe your scope glare if the uh, light is reflecting onto you. But it also conceals the, uh, the sound of your rifle or the, the blast of your round. So having that ability to lower the decibel ratings. Uh, fun fact is that uh, just uh, a, a drywall and studs can lower your decibel rating between 30 and 50 uh, decibels. So if you include that onto your suppressor, which suppressors on average can lower your decibel rating depending on your round and uh, you know everything else, uh, can lower up to 50 decibels. So if you do the math, you put around uh, 80 to 100 uh, decibels lower from your gunshot, uh, you can achieve a lot and people in the surrounding area will be uh, none the wiser. Other things you can do is soundproofing in your environment. Maybe put mattresses on the walls or uh, foam or something that absorbs sound better to help lower uh, that, that decibel rating some more and absorb some of that shock. You can tint your windows to conceal yourself from doing that stuff or add curtains or also fire from like from behind a screen in your position or firing through holes. Now, other things you can do to help conceal your position and stuff like that is uh, adding a suppressor. Uh, they reduce muzzle flash. Uh, they kind of change the sound of your firearm a bit so they're harder to locate. Uh, they add more of a dull sounding uh, noise to it. Uh, so if you're staying in another position, uh, people can't triangulate where that shot came from. Also, you can do is uh, adding a shroud to your scope, covering it with a blanket, painting it, stuff like that. And then also maybe covering your, your lenses with uh, kill flashes or add pantyhose if you're on a budget. Uh, it does kind of distort the clarity of your optic, though. And then um, stacking on contingencies, like I said firing from inside a room or multiple rooms out of a window or a doorway or a crack or curtains or something like that. Um, and just kind of working on ways to blend in into your environment. Now, uh, when you do conduct, or if you do conduct some sort of uh, operation, uh, you're not gonna wanna be firing multiple rounds. You're gonna wanna do hit and run tactics. So you're gonna fire, you're gonna fire to like one shot, no more than two. Uh, the more times you fire increases your chances of being located. So uh, definitely fire. Just try to keep it as low as possible. One round, one target, shoot, move, right? Change your location. Maybe sometimes you don't want to change your location right away after performing a shot. Maybe you want to sit there for a little longer and then uh, wait for the right time to move. Uh, if you're in a vehicle and you're in a crowded area, uh, maybe just uh, 
get out of the vehicle, walk away, you know, uh, then come back to your vehicle, drive away, or maybe have, if you're working in a team, maybe have someone park your vehicle, get out, walk away, uh, like they're going to go do something, you conduct your operations. Uh, maybe they come back to their vehicle and then they drive away uh, while you sit in there and wait. Uh, do things that look normal uh, and that don't uh, draw suspicion. Uh, that's going to conclude uh, this video. If you like this content, make sure you like and subscribe. I will be putting uh, affiliate links to some of the, uh, these books that I get my information from, like Fry the Brain, uh, War of the Flea, and uh, TM03-55.5. Uh, uh, no, it's uh, 03. Yeah, TM03-05.5. Zero three dash zero five point two two two, and uh, if it's not, I'll just correct it. Put it up here in the corner. Um, and if you want to buy those books uh, from the affiliate links, they help us a little bit out with the money. Where uh, you can also find the downloads, listen to them on an audiobook or something, or an audio reader, and that will help you out. If you like this video, like subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.